All right, final chapter, um, chapter 21, Impulse Control Disorders. So we'll get right into this. Um, oppositional Defiant Disorder. Um, this is primarily a childhood disorder. Uh, the child will be angry and irritable, um, defiant and vindictive behavior, um, experiences social difficulties. They have a difficulty making friends, attending school, functioning, um, being a functioning member of a family unit. Um, conflicts with authority figures, um, academic problems, and often predictive to emotional disorders in young adulthood. So this, um, this is a child who um, has a hard time with um, being around others, be very defiant, telling parents, no, I won't do it, you can't make me, um, vindictive as far as revenge, having revenge, wanting to... Um, you know, it says vindictive acts are disturbingly regular for at least six months in your book. Um, and so the, and this person also doesn't like to take a lot of blame for anything. Um, will annoy and blame others for uh, things that, that they have done. So this is your oppositional defiant disorder. Intermittent explosive disorder um, is a pattern of behavioral outbursts in adults 18 years and older characterized by an inability to control aggressive impulses. So the, with intermittent explosive disorder, they have an inability to control their aggressive impulses and are 18 years or older. Um, this obviously would lead to problems with um, interpersonal relationships, um, working, so your occupational difficulties, and um, criminal, criminal difficulties. So they actually have a stage, um, kind of like when we talked about our um, cycle of abuse. Um, it's a pattern that goes from being upset to being remorseful. So their first stage is tension and arousal. Second stage is explosive behavior. Third stage is sense of relief. And final stage is feelings of remorse, regret, and embarrassment. Um, I want to say, yes, this is the, the, this is when I remember talking about this before. Um, in your book, it talks about a guy who, um, he first, he first is driving on the, driving on the road and somebody ahead of him is driving too slowly. It's followed by the explosive behavior and aggression. A response to the slow driver may be hitting the gas and dangerously passing the person on the shoulder of the road. Immediately thereafter, the person experiences a sense of relief and release, taking satisfaction by looking at the offender in the rearview mirror and delivering a negative hand signal. Delayed consequences include feelings of remorse, regret, and embarrassment over the aggressive behavior. After the event, reality may set in. Wow, I just risked my life to pass an 80-year-old man to get to a party that will go on for hours. I have to stop doing this. So that's the pattern, that the tension, the behavior, the sense of relief, and then the remorse. Uh, conduct disorder. Um, this is behavior is usually abnormally aggressive. Um, the rights of others are violated and societal norms or rules are dis disregarded. Um, this, this can, they can coerce others into activity against, against their will. Um, this one talked about a persistent pattern, which can be childhood adolescence, in which the rights of others are violated and societal norms or rules are disregarded, um, which I just said. The behavior is usually abnormally aggressive and can frequently lead to destruction of property or physical injury. Persons with this disorder initiate physical fights and bully others and may steal or use a weapon to intimidate or hurt others. Coercion into activity against the will of others, including sexual activity, is characteristic of this disorder. These behaviors are endure enduring patterns and continue over a period of six months. It is one of the most frequently diagnosed disorders of childhood and adolescence. Um, so complications of this is, you know, academic failure, school suspensions and dropouts, juvenile delinquency, drug and alcohol abuse, and juvenile court involvement. Um, and people with conduct disorder crave excitement and do not worry as much about consequences of, as normal like other people do. Um, childhood onset conduct occurs prior to age of 10 and is primarily in males. Um, little concern for others, lack remorse or guilt. 
project a strong image but have a low self-esteem. So what does this remind us of? Our antisocial personality disorder. The guy who has no empathy for others, does everything for his own self, um, but underneath has a low self-esteem. Um, and then our adolescent onset and conduct disorder. There's been no presence or no symptoms present prior to the age of 10. Um, the male to female ratio is not as high, indicating more girls become aggressive at this developmental stage. Callousness, lack of empathy, lack of guilt, and the callousness may be a predictor again to the antisocial personality disorder. Um, pyromania, this is repeated deliberate fire setting. Um, so again, experiences the tension and excitement prior to setting the fire. Um, shows an unusual interest in fire, such as matches experiences pleasure or relief when setting fire and do, done solely to satisfy relief pleasure. So that goes along with um, our intermittent explosive disorder um, that there's the tension that comes to it and the relief that comes after. And then kleptomania, uh, repeated failure to resist urges to steal objects not needed for personal use. Um, and the book talked about how this could potentially be linked to an addiction disorder um, because the person is acting to satisfy a compulsion. So, um, you know, I'm, that's still, I'm sure, being studied. But um, just know that that is kind of in between there, that, that it could possibly be a link to an addiction disorder. So... Um, our application of the nursing process, our assessment, so we're looking at the suicide risk, and then our self-assessment, so we're again providing equal care to all, regardless of how they're behaving um, or what they're going through. Um, diagnosis on 21-2 and outcomes identification on 21-3, actually don't worry about either one of those. Um, so our implementation, psychosocial interventions, so we want to establish a report, we want them to try, you know, have a trusting relationship with us, promote safety, we're setting limits and boundaries and providing activities for these patients, um, different medications that we can use, um, anti-anxiety and anti-psychotics for the intermittent explosive and conduct disorders. And then health teaching and health promotion, we as a nurse are going to assist families with creating safe environments and discuss realistic behavioral goals because we can discuss goals all day long, but if the patient can't meet them, then it won't really make any difference. So that's the end of that. Um, I will see those of you that I have in clinical this week and then all of you on Monday. Um, have a good week.